All right, ready to uh, experience a pretty exciting phenomenon that's coming up here before too terribly long in the skies. And here to talk with us about it a little bit, uh, Pat Hartigan, Rice uh, Professor of Physics and Astronomy. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, stargazers can expect to see here coming up. Well, it should be a really, really nice show, and it's a great opportunity to see one of these. Um, what we have is, is a total lunar eclipse, and when, what happens when that occurs is that the moon is going to be moving into the Earth's shadow. And the, there's several good things about this particular eclipse. I think one of the more, most useful things about it for, for most people is the time of evening is going to be occurring, is that it will be occurring early in the evening and it will be really easy to see. It's not something you need any special equipment or anything like that. Um, the moon should begin to go into the darkest part of the Earth's shadow at about 9.30 our time. And it will be kind of an interesting looking thing for about an hour and 10 minutes as it goes into the shadow. It will almost look like a little bite has sort of been taken out of the moon as the moon progressively goes into the shadow. And then once it's totally in the shadow, what you'll notice is that it tends to kind of have a red color. And that's very unique to uh, lunar eclipses. And what's happening there is that the, if you were actually on the moon looking uh, at the Earth, what you would see is this bright ring, red, red ring around the Earth, which is where the atmosphere of the Earth is taking the sunlight of essentially all the sunrises and sunsets simultaneously around the Earth and refracting that light to the moon. And because sunsets and sunrises are red, that makes the moon look red. And then after about an hour, this is a pretty good eclipse. It lasts for about an hour. Um, then the process reverses. And then another hour and 10 minutes or so, it comes back out again. And it really is easy to access like, for people who may not normally uh, be into looking at the stars. Like you said, no equipment will be needed. And, and the main elements of the show all happen before midnight. Like you said, unlike uh, some of these other eclipses or overnight events we might see. Yeah, that's right. In fact, even another good thing about it, if, if any of your viewers have any scientists, um, the, most schools, I think, are off on Monday. And so you can keep your kids up, and it's a great thing to uh, have your kids up and, and watch the event. It's a, a great connection to the, our natural world. Yeah. There's one other aspect to this that um, people have been talking about, and that is that the moon is a little bit closer than average to the Earth during this eclipse. Um, some people call that a supermoon. It's not a very large effect, but it's another nice thing to have, I think. Yeah, that's always uh, catching the eye, too, for people who are out and about and who haven't been paying attention to this. And we're not going to see this uh, again for, uh, what, about two years and change. So it is important to get out and uh, enjoy it and take note of it. Yeah, I mean, lunar eclipses overall aren't that rare. You typically have about one per year, but you only tend to see them on the side of the Earth that's facing the moon. So you get them about once every two years where, for any given location. So the next one is uh, in two and a half years, I think, in May, but that one's at five in the morning and you know lasts only about 15 minutes. So there's another really good one, which is, I think, in about three and a half years. It's May 2022, I think. Um, and that one is similar to this, it'll be in the early evening. But after that one, if you want to have a supermoon total eclipse like this in the early evening, you're going to have to wait until 2050. Wow. So <laughs> this is, a, I think, a really great opportunity. Really, it's something that, that everybody should experience. It's, it's nice and slow. It's not like you're going to run out and miss it. You have an hour to see it when it's in its total phase. And I think it's a really fun thing for everybody to go see. You don't need any special equipment. Although if you have binoculars or something like that, you can use them definitely. Real quick before we let you go, what are your trained eyes most excited to see during an event like this? What are you looking forward to? Well, you know, there's actually a couple things. Um, one thing that you can look for is the color of the moon compared to what your experiences are with previous eclipses. Because if there's, for example, some volcanic activity on the Earth, then the atmosphere of the Earth can become more kind of more opaque, and then the actual color of the of the moon it will be different. Um, the other thing that I sometimes try to think about are all of the cycles. There are, if we had more time, I talk a little bit more about the eclipse cycles. But there are these cycles where you have similar eclipses that happen over the course of many many centuries. And in particular, there's one that goes back um, 225 centuries. So when I look at these types of eclipses, I begin to think about what it must have been like 
you know, 20,000 years ago during the Ice Age when a similar kind of eclipse happened. It's a really wonderful connection, I think, to our past and to past cultures, too. Absolutely. And again, you can check it out with the naked eye Sunday night, the uh, supermoon eclipse. Pat Hart again from Rice University. And the weather's good. Thank you to the weatherman. <laughs> That's right. I will pass that along. Uh, Zach, our uh, meteorologist, he always likes to get pats on the back for moments like that. Uh, uh, sir, we definitely appreciate it. The last two have sort of been clouded out. So right. It's a great opportunity. Everybody should just go out and have a look. Absolutely. Pat Hart again from Rice University. Sir, thank you for your time and enjoy yeah, the eclipse. You.